Hey everyone, Disturbed Shadow here, back to bring you a brand new album review. Today we'll be talking about the new debut album from the band Saint Asonia, which is the new super group featuring Adam Gontier, formerly of Three Days Grace, and Mike Mushak from Stained. So let's just jump in and talk about a few things about this album before we go into the specific tracks that I wanted to mention. So, Three Days Grace was one of the first uh, hard rock bands I really got into back in middle school and high school and I really enjoyed listening to the, their albums over the years, and I was very disappointed when Adam left the band to sort of, he said he was sort of feeling the direction they were going in, and then I was very interested to hear what he was doing when I heard that he was going to be releasing a new album with a new band that also featured Mike Mushak, the guitarist from Shane, Stained, so I was very curious to see what was going on here, and I was slightly disappointed to hear that it wasn't actually that different than Three Days Grace, and also not as good as some of the, the stuff they had put out in the past when he had been in that band. But it's still a pretty solid album, so let's just jump in and talk about some of the tracks. First one I talk, want to talk about is the, the opening track, Better Place, which is the first single they released earlier this year. And I think it's a pretty solid track. It, it really shows off uh, this band at their best, where there's a lot of really great heavy riffs that are really catchy and just pull you into the song. And really solid vocal performance from Adam, but there are a few moments where his vocal performance seems a little bit off. It's still, it's still very solid though, and it's a really good track. It's one of the better ones on the album. And then the next couple tracks, "Blow Me Wide Open" and "Let Me Live My Life," are very solid. And what I like about them is that the bass is turned up really loud on the intros, and that you can just hear it constantly throughout the whole song, and that the bass sort of stands out. It is just following along mostly with what the guitars are doing, but the fact that it's turned up that loud, it just has a really nice feel to it. Track number four, Even Though I Say. What I like about this is that they blended acoustic guitars into it, and then there's a pretty solid uh, vocal performance from Adam here again. It's one of the better ones he has on this album. But like I said before, that there are a few moments on this album where his I'm not feeling his vocals as much, and now that's just personal preference, but I don't think they're as strong as they were on some of his other material that he's released in the past with Three Days Grace, but it's still pretty solid. Track number five, Fairy Tale, was the first one that really uh, jumped out at me and made me go like, wow, this is a really, really good song. And what I like about it is the lead guitar playing. There's just really cool effects on it. It just has a really nice feel to it. And this is the first one that, that really felt why it wowed me is because it felt different than a Three Days Grace track. Like The first few felt like they could have been on any Three Days Grace album, but this one really felt like it was from a different band. It just had a really interesting feel to it. And it's, uh, I just really like this track. and it, it does have a little bit of that Three Days Grace feel to it, but it feels fresh and different too. And you can really hear that, um, the unique things that uh, Mike Mushak is bringing to the table on guitars. And it's probably one of my personal favorite tracks on the album. Track number six, King of Nothing, was one that really didn't stand out to me at all. There wasn't a whole lot of interesting stuff going on to it, and it just it didn't jump out at me at all. Track number eight, Dying Slowly. Has, uh, this is another one with a really solid vocal performance. There are a few moments where the, the lyrics could be a little bit stronger, but overall it's a nice melodic song with some heavy riffs and it just has a really great feel to it. Track number nine, Trying to Catch Up With The World, was another one that really didn't stand out to me that much at all. It's just kind of bland, in my opinion, and just not a whole lot going for it. Like, like King of Nothing, it just didn't stand out to me at all. But I understand why someone else might enjoy this track. Track number 10, Happy Tragedy, which is overwhelmingly probably the favorite track on this album by most people I've talked to or have seen on comments. It's just a really solid track. It's just got a lot going for it. Really great riffs. Adam's best performance on uh, this album vocally and really strong lyrics as well, and this all comes together really nicely, and there's some great uh, lead playing, uh, like solo work, that just is really solid, and just comes together for a really awesome track. And finally, track number 11, Leaving Minnesota, which is a mostly acoustic track, with some, just backed up with some drumming and stuff like that. It's, it, it's probably one of the better ones on this album, in my opinion. Just, I don't know, something about this, this uh, track really stood out to me. And I really enjoyed it. So, like I said, it's one of the stronger tracks on this album. And it's uh, definitely worth checking out. And it's a good way to uh, close out the album itself. 
Anyway, that wraps up my discussion of the tracks. Now let's jump in and talk about the band members themselves. So let's start off with Adam on vocals. Like I said before, I don't think it's his best vocal performance. It's nowhere near as good as uh, stuff that he's put out with Three Days Grace, but it's still a, a pretty decent performance. And the, there are moments like on uh, Happy Tragedy and Livy, Minnesota, a better place where it sort of gets up to the level that he was uh, performing at with Three Days Grace. But that's just a personal opinion. If you do enjoy it, that's okay too. But just personally, I'm just not feeling his vocals as much as I did on any of the four Three Days Grace albums that he performed on. But on the guitar side of things, on rhythm guitar and uh, Adam guitar, Adam was doing a pretty good job on guitar and blending in nicely with uh, Mike's lead playing. And there's a lot of great riffs in both of them, a lot of great uh, melodic stuff happening, like solos, like on Happy Tragedy, are just interesting effects and stuff like that, like on uh, on Fairy Tale, to mix things up a bit. And I, I think the guitar work is probably the strongest thing on this album. There's great riffs like on Better Place and Fairy Tale and uh, uh, dying slowly and happy tragedy were these just really big heavy riffs that you didn't really get a whole lot with Three Days Grace as much especially some of the lighter stuff but it feels more like some of the the, the riffing and stuff like that that was on uh, Stain's uh, 2011 album I think it was 2011 it was just a really heavy sort of gritty guitar playing and just that's a really great sound to it Tom Duffy on the bass as I mentioned uh, the, the, most, of, most of the time the bass is just sort of following along with what the guitars are doing but there are a few moments where it deviates and like I said it's turned up pretty loud so you can always hear it especially on the tracks Blow Me Wide Open and Let Me Live My Life where the bass really stands out and you can just hear all the, all the sounds coming out of that bass and just really good feel to it and finally Rich Bedeau on drums uh, the drums sort of don't really stand out to me. There's not like a whole lot of like, wow, there's a really cool drumming moments here. But there's nothing bad either. It's, it's always fitting along with what the songs actually need. Like more pullback simplistic stuff on Leaving Minnesota or a little bit more uh, upbeat, frantic stuff on Better Place and Happy Tragedy to uh, fit in with the sort of the mood that the songs require. But like I said, there's nothing that really stands out on the drums, but there's nothing bad on the drums either, so Rich is doing a good job with this band, and perfectly fits what they need at, for each track. Anyway, that wraps up my discussion of the members themselves, so some closing thoughts. Like I said, personally, I don't think it's as strong as some of the stuff Adam's put out with Three Days Grace, but I think it's a really solid album overall, and if you're a fan of Three Days Grace, and a fan of Adam's vocals, then you should definitely check this album out. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more of my reviews, be sure to subscribe. But until the next video, I've been Disturbed Shadow, and I'll see you guys next time.